Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about the recently passed bill by the parliament on the national capital territory of Delhi. The bill has generated a lot of controversy as you know and through this uh, bill we shall also try to understand the overall arrangement that is there with respect to the administration of the national capital territory of Delhi. Now before we get into this <clears throat> let us also try to understand the context because of which this bill was brought. Uh, and then we will also try to look into the how the union territories have been created in India and what are the provisions given in the constitution uh, and specifically we will discuss about the issue related to Delhi. So <clears throat> what happened was uh, the Delhi government as you all know that had a lot of uh, differences with the central government over the issue of control over the civil servants or the bureaucrats in the Delhi government. And related to that, there was a judgment of the Supreme Court that came in May 2023. This judgment, uh, which basically was on the issue to uh, decide the dispute bit over the control of the civil servants, went in favor of the Delhi government. And therefore, the central government immediately brought an ordinance to uh, establish its control over the administration of the Delhi government. And later on, when the ordinance was also questioned in the court, the government brought a bill to <coughs> replace the ordinance and this bill which was brought which we all know that is GNCT D amendment bill 2023 as it has been passed by the Rajya Sabha it is also likely <coughs> to become an act now when it is assented by the president so by the time the video will be recorded and it will uh, you know be available the bill would have become act. So wherever we have used the term bill here, you can simply replace it by act. So let us try to now discuss about the overall issue with respect to union territory uh, that is there in the constitution. So what happened was initially after independence, certain territories which were uh, special in its uh, characteristics, which either were part of the princely states or had some special problems were included as territories which were controlled by the central government and they were included in part C states. And these part C states later on were replaced by the provisions in the constitution which is given there under article 239. Remember that earlier article 239 was related to the administration of part C state but when the state reorganization act was passed uh, in 1956 article 239 itself was replaced and now it talks about the administration of union territories where article 239 says that the administration of union territory shall be done by the president who shall appoint an administrator to care of these responsibility and also it will be subject to a law which parliament also can make with respect to administration of these territories. Apart from this, it was by the 14th amendment act in 1962 that the government brought in some changes in the constitution and it included article 239 capital A which provides for some power to the parliament to make law and create legislature and council of ministry in some of the union territories. Now this obviously was brought in relation to Pondicherry which was included but along with Pondicherry certain other union territories were also included under the provisions of article 239 capital A. Also it provided for another article 239 capital B which talked about the power to promulgate an ordinance because when there will be legislature in some of the union territories and if the legislature would not be in session and a law would be required so or in that case ordinance can be promulgated by the president so that is why article 239 capital b this provision was made now article 239 capital a which is providing for a law that could be made under this itself government brings in the parliament uh, the government of union territory act 1963 and many union territories were covered but these were remember important union territories like pondicherry and certain others which became states later on now over the period of time there have been changes also in these union territories some of them became states and some remained there with respect to this law, it is mentioned there that it will provide for a legislative assembly and also the council of ministers in some of the union territories and its details were also given in the law because the law has been made under the provision of article 239 capital A. So Pondicherry is the only union territory which is now left in this category. Right for Delhi also there has been special provision that has been made afterwards and we will see this how. So this is how it all started with respect to the union territories that uh, for some union territories 
the provisions would be covered under article 239 some of them would be covered under 239 capital a where there is a provision for legislative assembly and council of ministers also now what happens that over the years there had been increasing demand for the statehood to delhi because you know that delhi is a as a national capital territory <coughs> it has local issues also but there are many establishments of the central government also located so delhi's law and order situation and uh, situation which is related to public order and police this is important for even the central government and therefore uh, some power has been kept with the central government but at the same time because of local regional issues and with increasing uh, importance of decentralization and democratization of polity there had been a consistent demand that delhi should be given a statehood and uh, there have been many political parties who have been making this demand and on the front it was led by the bharatiya janata party also so in the context of this government in 1991 it brings in the 69th amendment act by which it has provided for two more provisions related to the national capital territory of delhi apart from the provisions which are related to union territory which is there for delhi there is a special provision under article 239 capital aa and 239 ab 239 aa has certain provisions which we are going to discuss in detail and 239 ab it talks about the failure of constitutional machinery because now under article 239 aa delhi will be given some powers of a state government so they have also included a provision wherein if there is a constitutional failure of constitutional machinery in delhi then the central government can intervene and a similar provision like the president's rule is available in other states we have for delhi uh, it is covered under article 239 capital a b so let us try to understand the provisions which are covered under article 239 a a this it talks about that the union territory of delhi will now be called as the national capital territory of delhi and the administration would be carried on by the lieutenant governor it also says that national capital territory of delhi would have a legislative assembly in which the members will all be directly elected and the legislative assembly of delhi shall have the power of making law with respect to the items in the state and the concurrent list but it can make laws on all the items except for entry 1 2 and 18 which is related to public order police and land also along with this along with entry 1 2 and 18 it also says that entry 64 65 and 66 if they are connected with entry 1 2 or 18 and then on those areas also it will not be able to make law this entry 64 65 66 is related with jurisdiction of court with uh, related to court fee as also with respect to offenses offenses is covered under uh, entry 64 65 is jurisdiction of court and 66 is related to court fee but this is not as important still they may give some statement in the exam so you should just keep this fact also in mind then it says that apart from legislative assembly the government of delhi will also have a council of minister with chief minister as the head this will not be having more than 10% of the total strength of the legislative assembly that will be the composition of the council of minister of the government of delhi and the ministers and the chief minister both will be appointed by the president president will first appoint the chief minister and other ministers will be appointed by the president on the advice of the council of ministers remember this now uh there may be a confusion regarding that some people may think that the chief minister or some minister they are appointed by lg but obviously that power will not be with respect to lg because lg lieutenant governor and the elected government of delhi will somehow work in parallel the arrangement has been made in such a way then it says that <coughs> to the council of ministry is there to in and advise the lieutenant governor where the legislative assembly has power to make laws that means wherever the government of delhi that means the legislature of delhi has a power of making law in those areas the lg will have to listen to the advice of the council of ministers but lg can also act in discretion in certain areas which may be mentioned in some of the laws it also says that if there is a difference between uh, the opinion of lg and the ministers or the council of minister at large in that case the matter shall be referred to the president and it shall be decided by the president and whatever decision is taken by the president it shall be considered final but 
if the president is taking his own time to decide the matter in the meantime lg was given the power to act on all such issues or urgent matters now this is a, an important area because it will generate controversy the lg may purposefully refer the matter to the president in many cases president may not decide the matter and lg will get a chance to declare it as an urgent issue and take decisions which otherwise would have been taken by the delhi government so this is a very important point which generated a lot of controversies later on and we also see this fact that the delhi has an legislative assembly and a council of ministers from 1993 onwards when this these laws will be implemented let's move ahead another provision under article 239 aa is related to <coughs> the power of the parliament to make laws right that means parliament can also make law to supplement these provisions and give more details related to the administration of the national capital territory of delhi and in this regard the parliament also came up immediately after this constitution amendment was brought in parliament also made a law called as government of ncty of delhi gnctd act this was enacted in 1991 and it is this act which has been amended also recently about the bill which has been passed now this law it contains the details of the working of the legislative assembly of the political executive and also the relationship of the political executive with administration which the government has recently tried to change okay so now let us look at further conflicts and issues that they will arise after this amendment has been made in the constitution from 1991 onwards and when the delhi government will come into existence then there will be a close coordination between the lieutenant governor uh, who is a representative of the central government and the government of delhi many a times both the government will be of the same party and sometimes when they are of the opposite party also there had been close coordination but since the aam aadmi party had come to power it had generated a lot of conflicts over with respect to the power of lg and the power of the council of ministry or the delhi government so let us see what all these conflicts one of the conflicts as i mentioned has been related to the friction this friction of power sharing is with respect to the matters which is to be referred to the president right because lg may purposefully send some of the matters to the president so as to get more time and in the meantime he can declare them as an urgent issue and start taking the decisions instead of the decisions of the chief minister that uh, was required to be implemented right so this is one of the issue second issue is related to the posting orders whether the uh, posting orders will be given by the government of delhi or whether it should be given by the lg or the president there were many other issues over which the conflicts arises with respect to the appointment of public prosecutor uh, with respect to appointment of commission of enquiry whether it should be done by the delhi government without the concurrence of lg or not there had been issue of passing of executive orders by the delhi government that is gnctd means the government of national capital territory of delhi so that is uh, the abbreviation which i'll be using in this entire presentation so competent to pass the whether it is competent to pass the executive order without placing it before the lg or not if it is related to the delhi electricity reform act or delhi electricity reform rules of 2001 so on these areas there had been a lot of controversy between the central government and between the government of delhi another issue was whether lg was empowered to direct uh, anti corruption bureau to take cognizance of offences uh, rather not to take cognizance of offences against the officials of the central government now obviously here the lg will act on behalf of the central government so as to provide certain types of protection to the administrators in delhi which may not be liked by the delhi government so these have been the conflicting issues and because of which the government the state government would be in trouble there have been interferences from the central government or many a times they have been delaying tactics by the central government and the administrative efficiency will go down because of which the government of delhi will reach to the court and um, the government here in in 2018 a judgment will come supreme court passes a judgment wherein it said that the government will not that is the delhi government it is not under any obligation to seek concurrence of lg on its decisions now this is a big relief for the government of delhi as the government's decision uh, will be more autonomous now and they do not have to listen all the time to what the lg has to say so it is under no obligation to seek concurrence and it also said that if there is a difference of opinion between the delhi government and the lg which the constitutional provision says that the matter may be referred to the president here the supreme court says that 
these differences need to be resolved keeping in view constitutional primacy of representative government and cooperative federalism now what does this mean this simply means that before sending the matter to the president lg should consult the chief minister and both the chief minister or the delhi government and lg should together try to resolve the difference keeping into account constitutional primacy of representative government and cooperative federalism and only as a matter of last resort if the conflict is anyhow not getting resolved then only the matter should be sent to the president and that also in some of the rare cases right so overall the supreme court judgment has done what it had made extremely difficult for the lg to refer a matter to the president because what will happen if the now the lg will refer the matter to the president and the government of delhi will challenge in the court the court can intervene on this very basis of the decision which was given in the year 2018 on the basis of constitutional primacy of representative government and cooperative federalism now obviously this brings down the power of the central government so central government would like to bring about some changes so gnc government of nct of delhi that act that law which was there earlier it will be amended in the year 2021 and this by this law what the government is trying to do is gives primacy to lg over the elected government of delhi and the key provisions of this act includes that the government of nct of delhi now would mean lg himself so most of the power has shifted to lg this is a big change it is a kind of a tilt which has gone in favor of the central government with respect to the administration of delhi and this has had brought down the powers of the elected government of delhi what also has been done is that lg has been given discretionary powers even in those areas which are in the legislative competence of the delhi assembly on the areas where it can make laws even those areas lg will have discretionary power that means he can intervene certain things or he may ask certain laws certain issues not to be implemented also on matters L, uh, specified by lg that means lg himself can specify certain matter in which his opinion is a must now right and lg himself will decide that right before taking any executive action on chief minister's decision that means if chief minister has taken some decision and it is to be implemented now what is being expected is that the lg can also specify some of these matters he may say that you have to take my opinion before you will execute anything so this is again an interference from the central government in the administrative affairs of the elected government of delhi it also bars the legislative assembly or its committee from making rules with respect to matters on day to day administration as also the legislative assembly or its committee cannot make rules with respect to conduct of inquiries in relation to administrative decisions so it has again cut down upon the powers of the legislative assembly and its committee it also says that lg will now have the power of reserving some of the bills also for president's consideration so this is how this act will cut down upon the powers of the delhi government and this law also would be challenged in the court by the delhi government in relation to that the very recent judgment that had come in may 2023 because of which the government has brought this new law or bill so in this judgment let's see what has been declared delhi government had actually approached the supreme court in relation to a specific issue which i had mentioned earlier because the central government's officers which were now deputed to the delhi government these bureaucrats were trying to push the files to the central government instead of the decision to be taken up by the state government this will not be like by the state government so civil servants because they were pushing policy files directly to lg the matter was raised before the court and the court came up with this judgment let's see what the judgment is here it is said that the delhi government power to make law delhi government will have the power to make law and control over the deputed bureaucrats that means the deputed bureaucrats Uh, through this the government of delhi will have the power of ias and joint cadre services i mean those officers which are working from these services in the delhi government right and this is important because if the delhi government is not going to control the officers it will become very difficult for the political executive of the delhi government to control the entire system of implementation implementation of policy and vision of the government will become very very difficult and even the day to day administration there will be less efficiency 
so <coughs> this is one aspect then the judgment also says that lg is bound by the advice of the council of ministers on matters within the legislative scope of the nctd or within the legislative scope of the delhi assembly remember that a lot of discretionary power was given right by those amendments to the lg and lg by his opinion he can also you know ask the state government not to execute certain things so those things have now been overruled by this judgment because lg is bound by the advice of the council of ministers in those areas which are in the legislative competence of the delhi government or where the delhi assembly can make the law and this will also include this important item which is services remember that land police and public order are outside the legislative competence of the delhi government or assembly but service matter which is covered under entry 41 of the state list anyhow is with the delhi government so now it has been made clear that the service matter the on the service matter the delhi government will have its legislative legis legislative competence uh, it has now been made clear that on the uh, service matters the delhi government will have its legislative competence so it becomes easier for the delhi government to make laws on these items and also to control these services and also the civil servants except of course this if the service is related with public order police and land then it will not be covered but apart from these three issues any other service will be covered under entry 41 and the delhi government can make law on that also included uh, in this judgment was the issue that uh, it, the court had observed that a constitutionally entrenched and democratically elected government needs control over administration and it also brings in this principle of triple chain of collective responsibility now it is well established that in case of a parliamentary democracy uh, we have the political we have the bureaucrats or the permanent executive who are which are accountable to the political executive political executive are accountable to the legislature and legislature is accountable to the people now in case if the political executive will not be able to control the permanent executive then how will political executive fulfill its own responsibility with respect to the legislature and also the people so it will break this triple chain of collective responsibility that's what the court said that in order to fulfill its own responsibility and accountability the political executive also needs to control the permanent executive so after this judgment the government brings in an ordinance to overrule these judgments ordinance was also questioned in the court in the meantime the court is still deciding on the ordinance the government has brought this bill which has been recently passed and is not now about to become an act so let us see what is there in this GNCTD amendment bill. Actually, the uh, title should have been amendment bill. So GNCTD amendment bill 2023, it seeks to dilute the powers of the Delhi government over services. Let us see the provisions of this amendment bill. First and foremost, it talks about establishment of National Capital Civil Service Authority as a permanent authority. And it is this body which is now going to take care of decisions with respect to postings and control of civil servants so neither it is going to be in the central government's hand nor it is going to be in the state government it is going to be with this permanent authority but then the question is who is having more control in this permanent authority that will be known when we look into the composition of this authority so what it does with respect to these decisions it is going to make recommendation to lg for transfer and posting of all the group a service officers which are working in the delhi government and also the Danix officers which are working in the National Capital Territory of Delhi. Except for those officers which are handling obviously the three issues of public order, land and police because those will directly be decided by the central government. Rest of the officers, the transference and postings, uh, it is going to uh, give recommendation to LG. That means this permanent authority is going to give recommendation to LG with respect to their transfers and postings. Also, this body will now look after the vigilance and non-vigilance matters which have been initiated which will lead to initiation of disciplinary proceedings and grant of prosecution sanctions so if some officer has done some corrupt corruption some wrong and it needs to be prosecuted investigated and prosecuted then the sanction can be given by this authority so the vigilance and non-vigilance matters also the power is with this authority now let us look into the composition which includes the chief minister as head and then the chief secretary principal secretary and home secretary of the Delhi government there are three bureaucrats and one chief ministers 
remember that all these three officers somehow are controlled by the central government so they may act on behalf and the decision is to be taken by majority so obviously it will become very difficult for the delhi government to have its say when it comes to deliberation in this body right and it also says that lg may have the power of returning the recommendation of the authority also right see you have already given given more weightage in the composition to the uh, bureaucratic bodies which is controlled by the central government and now lg also has been given the power that he can return it back if it doesn't uh, you know if there's a conflict if he doesn't accept the opinion of this authority it may return it back to the authority and if the authority maintains that he whatever suggestions or recommendations it has given it will sustain it will be sustained then in this difference of opinion the lg's decision is going to be final so obviously central government has tried to control the affairs more or less in effect over here as we can see also what is included in this amendment bill is that center can make rules on the personal affairs as far as these officers are concerned and even the conditions of service obviously it's covered under the personal affairs and it can also it will also have the power to appoint authorities boards commissions or statutory bodies so these are the provisions which have been included in this recently passed bill and this has generated a lot of controversy also now if you can just compare briefly that what was there in the ordinance and what is there in this law like the ordinance which is sub judice and this bill which has been brought instead of that ordinance now this will this bill will be there you know in effect so let's see some differences and the government has tried to improve few things because of the criticism which were leveled against the government so we'll see the ordinance of may 2023 and then gnctd amendment bill which has been brought what is the difference one of the differences related to in the ordinance there was section 3a which says that legislative assembly of delhi and the delhi government will not have the power with respect to entry 41 that is service at all now this provision has been removed now it says that with respect to some of the services there is a you have this permanent authority which is going to take the decision right so some power power to make laws may still be there with the delhi government as per the provisions in the bill is concerned so in the bill this provision has not been included then section 45d of the ordinance it said that the power to uh, power of appointment of statutory commissions and tribunals will be with the central government now in the bill it says that these this particular power of appointment of statutory commissions and tribunals it will be with the president in case if the bodies are established under the laws of the central government and it will be with the national capital civil services authority if the matter lies or the body lies in the legislative assembly's law so this these are two slight changes in the provisions or some improvement that has been made in the bill over the ordinance because of the public criticism which has been leveled against the government so what all are the issues let us look at what is the government stand and government's argument is that national capital territory is not any other states but then the question is that it is the bjp itself as a party which had been making the demands for the you know uh, giving more powers to the delhi government and decentralization all that and we could see now because of political reasons or whatever it is trying to backtrack on these second is that it says that there has been some improvement obviously in the bill over the ordinance so this is justification which the government is trying to give then this will help in making a better coordination between the center and the state probably through these permanent authorities it may increase administrative efficiency and it also says that the provisions of the bill they are not contradictory to the decisions of the supreme court because anyhow the power to make a law is there with the central government under the constitution so that power remains that can even amend then it says that the scheme of administration it is formulated by the parliamentary legislation so that's what they ha still have that power intact with them so they can do so so it's a their legitimate authority to do then let us look at the of course create balance between the local and national interests the criticism of this bill so i have already been mentioned in between but let's look, look at overall a uh, comprehensive uh, set of criticism over this bill first is that it is politically motivated i don't think i need to explain that not on sound principles of governance because on one hand you are talking about decentralization now you are actually centralizing it is against constitutional spirit maybe against federalism or democracy it's against the values of decentralization seem going against article 239 aa because 239 aa clearly says that there are certain areas wherever the legislative competency is there with the legislative assembly those areas will be autonomous to the delhi government and only on apart from those three matters or subjects 
Delhi government should be free. So <clears throat> that somehow uh, is not being followed now and there will be interferences. So it is against democracy and the responsible government because you are not allowing an elected government of the state to exercise its power as per the requirements, as per the expectations of the people. And there is a, of course, this, all of this will lead to the erosion of the basic features because whether it is democracy or whether it is about, you know, the basic constitutional spirits which is getting affected. Also, it's a, it has been alleged that it's a frontal assault on the regional voices and aspirations of Delhi because of this interference of the central government violates the principle of federalism. It breaks the triple, triple chain of accountability as I have already explained before and court had also said that. It reduces the GNCT that means the government of Delhi and the chief minister and minister at the mercy of the central government and even to its secretaries, not only the government, even to its secretaries, to bureaucracies. Basically, what you are doing is that you are now control, giving the control in the hands of the bureaucrats over the elected representatives. And it undermines the principle of collective responsibility because it, the government will not be able to fulfill its responsibility towards the legislature. <clears throat> also, the vigilance and non-vigilance cases uh, which can now be initiated right, and disciplinary action that can be taken up, this is how the government can also be threatened. right? This seems to create an environment of fear and hysteria and intimidation and maybe the, these officers may even be threatened also if uh, certain uh, if they do not agree with what the central government has to say. So these are some of the criticism. Also, overall, it is a regressive provision because we are moving towards centralization and decentralization. And of course, it's a repeated violation of the judicial propriety because twice the Supreme Court has given the judgment and now it is being overruled by the law of the parliament. So these are the problems. This has holistically what all the issue of Union Territory of Delhi had been. I hope this video makes everything clear. Thank you.